What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie Blurred without fear. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today's video, we are gonna be talking about Thor, number 10 by Donny Cates and Nick Klein. And in this video, I'm gonna answer a question that a lot of people have been throwing my way because of some recent events that happened in this particular comic. Most important among them, how is Donald Blake so powerful? Why is he able to defeat some of Asgard's most powerful champions with little to no effort? Why Donald Blake went crazy in the first place? And above all else, why he is both Odin's most powerful creation and most powerful son. We're gonna talk about all that and more right now, but first, wash your damn hands and let's hit that intro. Word the wise, grass only greener when it's fertilized. Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies. That's any beautiful adrift in her purple lies. You can't see me, you see me. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. Okay, so last we left off, Donald Blake had banished Thor away to the same realm that he was residing in while Thor was active and, you know, moving about the place. Donald Blake had been trapped in that realm for a long time, and we now kind of know why he went crazy. What actually triggered Donald Blake's going crazy in that paradise realm that Odin had created for him when Thor was in control, Odin no longer being king of Asgard and passing that magic over to Thor, thus the Odin force becoming the Thor force, this is roughly about when everything went from sugar to shit, because we all know as of recent, the Thor force has been in flux. So not only was Thor not keeping up with these magics, these magics right now are broken. He's barely able to control Mjolnir now. These are things we actually discussed in the previous video, I'm not going to rehash it here, but go back to that video and you'll kind of know a little bit more about what's going on there. But as it stands, Donald Blake has now taken Thor's place and he has destroyed the cane, which was his way of channeling Thor back into reality. So now Thor is trapped in the paradise realm that has now become a place of nightmares. And what a lot of people have been kind of frustrated about is the fact that Donald Blake, while in Asgard, was able to beat not just one, but multiple of Asgard's champions, namely Beta Ray Bill, who he pretty much beat the brakes off of. And we learn that not much time has really passed since Beta Ray Bill and Thor had their little dust off in the pages of Thor number two and number three in Donny Kate's run. Beta Ray Bill, despite having a regenerative healing factor, is still not fully recovered from that battle. And Donald Blake, he has all the memories that Thor has. So he remembers not only the fact that that Beta Ray Bill and Thor are incredibly close, plus they have met before themselves. But that also means that if Donald Blake remembers everything that Thor remembers, that also means that he also knows a lot of the things that Thor knows, like combat tactics, techniques and abilities, the way that people fight. He remembers how all of Thor's opponents and allies likely fight as a result of this. Not only that, he possesses something that no one else in Asgard has, and it is a scalpel. Now, you're thinking to yourself, this scalpel, it's just a scalpel, but that's not the full story. You see, this scalpel is not some you know, magical thing that was passed down throughout the ages and forged by the dwarves and made of Uru, like Mjolnir or whatever, but no, this weapon is something that he kept close to himself, and it is bathed in the blood of Jormungan. This is something that we learned as a little bit later on in the book, we get back to Thor in this realm that we now know is called Below the Shadows of the World Ash, the once kingdom and cage of Dr. Donald Blake, Thor discovers that Jormungan has been defeated by Donald Blake, something that we posed in the previous video that maybe that's what happened. Maybe Donald Blake somehow defeated the serpent. And more importantly, we also talked about how he may have possibly become the new serpent. The fact that he, just like the way that Odin and Jormungan had this rivalry, this bitter diametrically opposed war against one another that was supposed to last throughout the ages, I think Donald Blake may have just put himself in a similar position with Thor, him taking the role of the serpent and Thor taking the place of Odin. Jormungan broke into this cage 
And I guess he felt maybe this was a way to get back at Thor somehow and by proxy Odin himself breaking into this cage and trying to ravage all he could. But when Odin passed on his kingship to Thor, once again, like I said earlier, the walls of magic became thin and the barriers were broken because the Odin force became the Thor force and Thor was not focusing his magics on that particular thing. Jormungand was going to go and try and tell Donald Blake the truth about everything that was going on. The fact that all of this world was a lie, that he was not in fact an actual real person, that he was a creation of Odin to teach Thor a lesson, something that Donald Blake mentions when fighting with Beta Ray Bill, saying that we were both created to teach Thor a lesson. This is actually a throwback to Thor number 337 back in 1983, which just so happens to be Beta Ray Bill's first appearance where Odin reveals that he gave Bill an advantage over Thor because he wanted Thor to learn something from their encounter. Jormungand had planned on basically taking on Donald Blake as a disciple, but Donald Blake had other ideas. Because just as Thor himself has the Thor Force and by proxy the Odin Force within himself, so too does Donald Blake, even if it didn't seem that way for all those years. And having the power of Jormungand plus that scalp of his, which, by the way, is dipped in Jormungand's blood, Donald Blake became a force to be reckoned with. He is now the most powerful person in Asgard right now, and it's not even close. Because as Jormungand points out, when the fury inside Donald Blake had awoken, he had never seen anything quite like this before. The rage of a man waking up to find his entire life has been a lie. Not only do we learn that Donald Blake is wielding a scalpel bathed in Jormungand's blood, but he is also wearing armor that is made from Jormungand's hide. And Jormungand confirms our suspicions from the previous video. He says he is the dragon now, Jormungand is no more. Like the way Jormungand is talking about Donald Blake is pretty much the same way that the devil in the episode of the Boondocks is talking about Colonel Stinkmeaner in hell. He is the baddest motherfucker that hell had ever seen. Colonel motherfucking stink cleaner! All right, your boy, I get money! And just like how Jormungand had so much hatred for Odin, Donald Blake has the same for Thor, and Blake is going to do everything within his power, humanly possible, to try and take the things that Thor cares about and burn them to the ground. And the first thing that he's setting his sights on is Jane Foster, who has no clue what is going on right now. As far as she's concerned, she sees Donald Blake, she thinks all is well. She even embraces him in a moment that I'm not gonna lie, Remind Reminded me almost too much of the uh, the final scene of Michael Jackson's thriller where you know Michael he sees the girlfriend he's like oh hey baby what's going on it was just a dream you're just freaking out and when they walk away he puts his arm around her he turns around and he's got the werewolf eyes again that's what this kind of reminds me of when Donald Blake looks back at us the reader while he's embracing Jane Foster this is really this is something really big I really love what Donny Cates has been doing with Thor and it's just like what he did with Venom he's finding a way to take care Characters that you probably didn't think much of and he is finding a way to make them interesting and make them something that you're gonna go oh my god wait a minute dude he's putting respect on this guy's name and he's doing it yet again we see Donald Blake run a rough shot on not just Beta Ray Bill breaking him down taking the power from him taking the Odin force reducing him back to his base form we see him lay the smack down on Volstagg and not just Volstagg but the Warriors 3 as a whole but also Sith, who has the power of Heimdall now, and the Thunder Guard as well, the entirety of it. Donald Blake basically comes in and pulls a hella from Thor Ragnarok in the MCU. He basically just shows up and just starts wrecking shop. The only difference here is that he's not killing everyone he comes into contact with. I mean, he literally is running through every last single champion in Asgard like he just got three stick nunchucks. He even disarms Sith of Heimdall's blade, essentially giving him control 
result of the Bifrost. And he banishes them to Dimension Blood, which is basically another hellscape realm that is the hunting grounds of the Vampacabra, which you just go ahead and take that in for a minute. And not only is Donny Cates making Donald Blake this tremendous villain in all this, but he's also making him kind of relatable in a way. Like, there's a point where after he's done beating the brakes off everybody, we see him say that you were in this realm of Asgard. All the years that he has spent locked away and he had all of this splendor around him that, yeah, it's almost no wonder that Thor forgot about Donald Blake. He gets it. But that doesn't mean that he's not going to burn Thor's world to ash. And I think there's no more appropriate place for you know, a, an enemy of Thor to start with than with Jane Foster, someone who is arguably probably one of his closest confidants, someone who he cares about deeply. And if for whatever reason he was able to harm her in any way, especially after everything they've been through together, it would hurt Thor the most. So if you've been wondering exactly how Donald Blake has gotten leveled up to this yo know, Super Saiyan level, that he's become this God tier character, now you know why. But anyways, let me know what you thought about Thor number 10 by Donny Cates and Nick Klein. Do you think Donald Blake is now one of the most OP characters in Thor's corner of the universe? Do you think that Donald Blake will maintain this power after Donny Cates' story arc has run its course? And more importantly, do you think Jane Foster realizes that something's up? Wash your damn hair! Hands and sounds off in the comments. So hey, you made it to the end of the video. Awesome for you. If you enjoyed this video and if you made it this far, I don't see how you didn't, do me a favor, Hulk smash that like button. And if you wanna see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell so you know when I post up. Also, feel free to go check out my Patreon where if you're chucking a buck, you can get early access to most of my videos up to a week early. And if you have time, make sure you swing by nerd901.com where you can find more of my content as well as other amazing stuff. Anyways, until next time, I love you 3000 plus ultra.